Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about basement steps. All right, now most of you guys that are watching this video already have stairs going down into your basement, and they're probably going to be just fine for a basement set of stairs. In this particular basement, the builder didn't install the correct steps going into the basement. What we're going to have to do is tear out the first set of steps that go up to the first landing and start from scratch from the basement floor and build new steps up to that first landing. We'll look at the incorrect steps, we'll talk a little bit about why they're wrong and what we're going to do, and then we're going to come back here to my shop in my pole building and we're going to build the steps. I'm going to show you how to cut out the stringers, uh, how to build the stairs. Uh, we're also going to be showing you guys uh, this particular basement staircase has skirt boards, so we're going to be talking about how to cut your skirt boards and install those, as well as your risers and your treads and build that new set of steps. So come on down with me and we'll check out this uh, incorrect staircase and we'll talk about the one we're going to build. Okay guys, I'm back down on this basement here. We're going to take a look at these steps that are wrong. There's our landing up there. The stairs do turn. They go around and back up again. Um, but the reason that we're doing this is the first step is only four inches tall. We're going to figure out the rise and the run on the set of steps before we can make the stringers. We're also going to have to make skirt boards, which are the pieces that run up both sides of the steps. All right, these, are, these are the skirt boards and the risers fit in between. So what we need to know is from this landing right here that I'm standing on to the concrete floor, we need to know what that height is. Right, that'll be the total rise of this particular set of steps. We're gonna be using the plywood that I'm standing on since this will be carpeted as our finished surface. So our total rise will be from the dimension from the concrete floor to this landing that I'm standing on to this rough, ply rough plywood surface. So I'm going to get that measurement and we'll take that back to the pole building and we can start our, um, our steps. We just went down to the job and we measured off the concrete floor to that landing I was standing on. That distance was 57 and a half. The basement floor is going to be like a real thin synthetic vinyl floor, which is only like an eighth of an inch. So we're just going to say the concrete down there is our finished floor. It's close enough. Our landing at the top is plywood, but we're going to have carpet coming down them steps right over top of that landing, and it's going to tuck and roll right down the risers and the treads the whole way to the bottom. So we're going to use the plywood on top of that landing as our finished surface up here at this end. All right, so we got a concrete floor and our plywood, 57 and a half. So here's how I figure it out. The ideal rise for each step is seven inches, okay? That's, that's, a, good, that's a good rise. Seven to seven and a half is a good rise. So what I do is I take my 57 and a half, 57 and a half, divided by seven inches is 8.2142 and a whole bunch of other numbers there. Well, we can't have 8.2142 steps, all right? Because we're figuring out how many steps we're gonna need to get up there. So what you do is you round that number down or up to the next whole number. In this case, 8.214 would be eight. So we're gonna say we're gonna have eight steps to go up that 57 and a half inch total rise. Now what we do then is clear that out, take the 57 and a half, 57.5, and divide that by eight. That's 7.18, which is close to in fractions, uh, seven and an eighth. Okay, so our rise for our staircase is seven and an eighth. So we will have eight equal rises that when we get up here to the top will put us right up at that 57 and a half inch total rise. So our unit rise is seven and an eighth. All right, and our total rise was 57 and a half. 
Now the other thing that we can figure out here is what is our unit run and our total run. Well for steps like I'm making for the basement and almost all the steps that I build, the, the cutout in the stringer is 10 inches. So each of these treads is 10 inches. And we've got eight of those treads in this particular staircase. So our total run would be eight times 10 would be 80 inches. All right, that's if we have eight steps going up. Now there's two different ways you can do this. There's two different ways you can get from this basement floor up to this landing. You can set it up so that your stringer brings you off of your landing or off of your first floor, if you're opening the door at the top of the stairs, you can walk out onto that first 10 inch step. All right, and that's the way I have it drawn here right now. Our, we're coming off of our landing or off of our uh, first floor plane at the first step. And we're walking out 10 inches onto that first step. Now, most basement steps aren't like that. Most basement steps, and I'm gonna change this drawing here, are like this here. And we'll get rid of the number eight there. We walk off of our landing down onto the first step or open the door at the top of the stair to the basement and we, we come off of the first floor plane and we walk down onto the first step of our stringers, of our steps, all right? And that's the way that I'm building these. So we actually have seven risers and seven treads instead of eight because our eighth rise will be the actual front of the first floor or in our case the uh, landing header that'll be our seven and eighth inch rise and the landing itself or the first floor of your house will be the eighth step okay so the math is still the same we still have seven and an eighth inch risers we just have one less step and one less riser the way that we're making it okay and like I said, you can do it either way. You can walk out onto that first step and you'd have eight treads and eight risers, but we're dropping down so we have seven risers, seven treads. All right, and our total run, we already figured out. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll change this to seven because we only have seven treads. So we have seven times 10. Our total run will be 70 inches. So our unit run is 10 inches. And we've got 7 times 10, which is 70. So there's all of our math done for us there. Okay, we've got the total rise of 57 and a half. We figured out that our unit rise is 7 and 8, 7 and 1 eighth. Our unit run is 10, and our total run is 70. So with those numbers there, we can go ahead and we can build our steps. Our, we can cut out our stringers. Okay, so... We've got these 10 inch treads cut into this stringer. And I can probably show it to you better this way. Our total unit rise is seven and an eighth, and our unit run is 10. And this is the angle of the stairs, which we'll have to figure out when we're down there because we're gonna be building skirt boards for our steps and we're gonna have to know this angle to do that. But to cut out the stringers, we only need to know the unit run and the unit rise, which is seven and an eighth for the rise and 10 for the run. And you can see that right here when I put this block of wood on here, that's what we cut out. This is an actual cutout from one of these stringers. We have seven and an eighth on the rise, on the unit rise, and we have 10 inches on the unit run. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, it's not rocket science. I, I mean, actually the, the trickiest part is finding your your unit rise. The run's easy. 95% of staircases, you're gonna be cutting out a 10 inch unit run. The unit rise is really the tricky part and you want to be somewhere between, ideally, somewhere between seven and seven and a half. I mean, you can go up as high as seven and three quarter. You don't wanna get as high as eight inches for your rise. Uh, most places, most code officers will, will flag that. They may let you get away with like seven and three quarters, but the ideal rise is get, is get as close to seven without going less than seven as you can. And that's, that's how we do the math. So again, 
You take your total rise, whatever it is, divide it by seven, take that number, round it up or down to the next nearest whole number, and then take that number and divide it back in to your total rise, and that'll give you your unit rise. All right, and it's simple for the, for the uh, run. Just take 10 times however many steps you have, and that number will be your total run. Okay, guys, so that's it. I did want to point out that our total run is 70 inches. That's from the back side of the stringer all the way down here to the very edge of the bottom tread cut out. That total run distance was 70 inches. And of course, we know that our total rise from the floor to the landing itself to the platform is 57 and a half inches. And guys, these numbers could be anything. Remember, this is just going up seven steps, in our example, up to the landing, halfway up the midway of the, of the staircase. Now, your steps could be going up 15, 16 steps straight on up, and your math is going to be totally different, but you're going to do it the exact same way based on your total rise, whether that rise is 57 and a half like we have here, or up 15 steps, it might be 100, 110 inches. But you're going to do the math the exact same way. Okay guys, so I just got back from Home Depot where I picked up these 2x12s, which I'll be making my stringers out of. Now we've got a 36 inch wide staircase going in from that landing down, uh, so we're going to be using three stringers. So I purchased three 8 foot 2x12s, and what we're going to do here this morning is I'm going to cut out my stringers. So to lay these out, we're going to be using a carpenter square, and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. With the square, I just have my square set up with two clamps on a scrap piece of trim that I'm going to slide across the top here, show you how we're going to do this. But in order to set this up, what you do is you take your square, I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but you can see I'm just a little bit past the seven mark on my almost framing square, even with the top of this board, which is going to represent the top of the, uh, of the riser. And on the other side, I've got my run. I've got my run set up right at 10 inches. There's the 10 inch mark there. And you can see that that 10 inch hash mark is even exactly at the edge, the apex of my piece of trim here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this setup here and I'm gonna slide it down my two by 12 and I'm gonna mark off my treads and my risers. It's already set up for me. So you hook it on the front here like this. And then you can just take this setup here and you can slide it down and mark all of your risers and your treads. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna start at one end here. Remember, I need seven treads and seven risers. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this end of my stringer, the center of my two by 12. Um, now you wanna leave enough at the top at the end for one more riser. So I'm not gonna start right here on the edge. I'm, I'm starting in about, about six, seven inches on this, okay, from the end. So this end here of my square is my tread, so I'm just gonna trace that. All right, so that'll be my 10 inch tread. And then I'll come from this side here and bring that down, that's my riser. Okay, and that is um, our first step. Now we need seven, so we're gonna do this six more times. So what you do then is you just slide your square up to the next point. Like that. And then we draw another step, another riser. Another tread, another riser. And then we're just gonna continue with that the whole way down the board here. So that was number two. Down to the next mark. Same thing again. That's number three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. All 
All right, so there are all of our treads and risers. Now, you always want to check um, to make sure that you have enough, enough wood on the backs of these stringers. And the way to determine that is just come off one of your corners here between your, the back of your tread and the bottom of your riser and measure off that point to the top. All right, and I've got five and a half inches there. You never want to have less than three inches from this point here to the bottom of your stringer um, or you're, you're cutting too much of the wood out and you'll have weak stringer backs, okay? So uh, I pretty much always am uh, going for a two by 12 rather than a two by 10 uh, when I'm doing this. Okay, now that we got those seven steps and rogers laid out, let me show you how we tackle the bottom of the steps, how we, how we draw that on there and measure that to sit on the concrete and what we do at the top of the stringer to cut it off so that it butts up against the uh, header side of our landing. Okay, so here is the line for our first tread, okay? Now, we have to create a way for this tread, for the stringer to sit flush on the floor. So what you do is, and I told you at the beginning we're going to have to leave enough room for one more riser here. So we're going to make the riser that's going to come off of the concrete floor perpendicular so what you can do if you want, you can take you can take a square and you can extend that line down there. Okay. Now we want to come down seven and a sixteenth. Just right there. And then we have to turn that back on a 90. And you can see what I was using here. This is just a piece of base trim that I was using for that setup. And then we can take our square and we can square that back. Now we're just going to cut it back across like this. All right, and all this right here will come out. This will be sitting on the floor. Now we have to do one more thing to this here. Since we want all of our risers and steps to be the exact same height when we're finished from the floor up to the landing, our treads are one inch thick. What we have to do is we have to cut an inch off the bottom of this stringer. So in order to get the same height of this step, uh, because we'll be adding the, the tread, we'll sit right there, it's one inch. We have to take it off the bottom, just on the first step. So I'm going to do one inch, and I'm going to cut that one inch straight off. All right, so we'll be cutting that out. So that's the bottom of our stringer. And we're going to go up the other end and cut the top to fit up against our landing. So we have to cut this off right here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to continue this line of the last riser straight through. Okay, so all this here will come out. Okay, so that's it. We've laid out our seven risers, our seven treads. We've marked the top to cut off so that it goes up against our landing, and we marked the bottom so that it'll sit down flush, flat on the floor. Now we're going to go ahead and cut this out. Now I left an extra quarter of an inch on the bottom of my stringer where it's going to sit on the floor. All right, just in case I need to adjust it a little bit, I have a little bit extra play here. I got an extra quarter inch on the bottom that I, that I can work with. If I need to raise or lower my stringer a little bit, I've got a little extra. Now, you don't have to do that. That's just something I do because the floors sometimes in the basements are not perfectly level. So I give myself a little forgiveness. So we did cut off three quarters of an inch instead of an inch. Remember, you're cutting off the bottom, the thickness of, the, of your treads. Our treads are an inch, so you should cut an inch off the bottom. I'm doing three quarter to give myself a quarter inch of play. So I'm gonna go ahead down and cut all those, and like I said, I'm gonna cut in just till I get to the apex here. I'm not gonna come the whole way through into the stringer to get this piece to drop out. I'm gonna get in as far as I can with the, uh, with the circular saw, and then I'll finish up my cuts with a handsaw, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so you can see I cut on 
the piece I'm cutting outside of the line on both of these cuts, and I stopped my saw right there at the apex. And you can see the piece is still in here because it doesn't cut the whole way through when you stop there. So you have to finish up these cuts with your handsaw. So just cut to the apex and stay on the piece side of the line that you're taking out. All right, so we finished up the cuts with the handsaw. So I'm gonna get down through here and knock the rest of those out. And we'll have our pattern done that we, that we can then take and use to mark our other two stringers. Okay, so that now is a completed stringer, except for maybe a little bit of adjustment down here on the bottom, like I told you, left a quarter of an inch there in case I need to, you know, shave a little bit more off or if the floor is a little uneven, I've got a little bit of play down here. Um, I only do that on the bottom of my stringers. At the top, I cut it off with the last riser like I did. So we can take this down to the job. Uh, I'm gonna take it down, set it up against the, uh, the landing down there to just make sure we have a good fit. Make sure it fits and I'm gonna come back if it looks good down there and we'll take the pattern, mark the other two, and we'll cut them, and we'll have our three stringers for this set of stairs. Okay, guys, so we just got back from the job. The, uh, the pattern fits pretty decent. We like, had like an eighth of an inch, a strong eighth of an inch of discrepancy there, and we were able to get it to be perfectly level, the treads to be perfectly level by working with that quarter of an inch that I kept on the bottom of the stringer. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take our pattern, which is the one we originally cut, sit it on top of the other two 2x12s, two trace it out, and cut those out as well. Okay guys, whenever you have your pattern done and you know it's right, you're going to mark your other stringers. Now, a trick that we, we like to use, um, when, you, when you get this lumber, this number two spruce or whatever you're buying to do your stringers, ours is number two spruce, there's going to be knots in them. Um, so when I'm laying my pattern on top of my new 2x12 to mark the pattern, if there's a knot somewhere that's, that I don't want to be in my actual stringer, I'll try to space that knot out so that it's part of the cutout pieces. Okay, so you can see I've got my, my pattern, which I marked pat so I wouldn't forget uh, which one was the pattern. I think what I'm going to do is position it so that I can cut out this knot in the knockout piece and this knot in the knockout piece and that will make for a stronger stringer and eliminate those knots. So, and you could also take this stringer and flip it back and forth. You could turn the board over to make it whatever you want um, to eliminate knots, but a lot of folks don't think about that. They'll just start marking patterns and they'll have nasty old knots that can fall out and make a big chunk out of one of your steps or one of, one of your risers if the knot comes loose. So anytime you can get rid of these big knots, uh, the better for the strength of the stringer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this evened up here. You always try to even up the backs. Make sure that's nice and flush the whole way down. All right, that looks good. And then all I'm going to do is just take my pencil, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to trace all of the risers, all the treads, and when I'm done making these marks the whole way down, I'll have my cutouts for my, my 2x12 to make my second stringer. And I'll repeat the same process for the third. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to start cutting out stringer 2 and stringer 3. Okay guys, so we're back down here on this job. Uh, I've got the other staircase torn out. All right, we just got a big hole here now. There's our floor down there. There's our landing we were getting to. All right, so what I had to do was then to figure out where the top of my, my new stringers are gonna set, that has to be eight and an eighth inches, all right? Because we've got seven and an eighth inch rise, but I've got a one inch thick tread going on here, so I have to come down another inch so that I end up from the top of my tread to my landing seven and an eighth. So I'm at eight and an eighth. 
So I snap the line across here at eight and an eighth, and that's where the very top of my tread on my stringer is going to sit. So we're using joist hangers to uh, to support these. We're actually going to hang them. In order to use a joist hanger, you have to cut a notch into your into your stringer. Okay, and we're going to tap this in there. So you find the thickness of your hanger bracket, which is two inches. All right, and we're going to cut right into our stringer here, a two inch slot, just the thickness of your saw blade, just cut in two inches. I normally come up from the bottom of my stringer about an inch and make, and make the cut, which you can see right there. Right there we've got, we're coming in two inches. All right, then you just take your, your hanger and slide it in there. You just don't want the top of your, your joist hanger to be taller than the top of your stringer. All right, so I kept mine down about an inch. And then you're going to find your, your left and your right and your center. Stringer location, just rule of thumb on these here. Your finished drywall, you want to come in about an inch and a half on both sides. You don't want to have your stringer up tight against your, your drywall. You want it to be in roughly an inch and a half from the drywall on both sides. And then the middle one, you just center. So you can see I have these laid out already right on that line. Got it on my inch and an eighth line at the top, and I've got it right on my pencil line on this side for an inch and a half. And then you just tap these in. All right, and then you can use your joist hanger nails, finish it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to my middle one and my end one, and that'll be it for the stringers. Then our stringers are 100% done. Uh, we did we did check our stringers. Now, if this would have been tilted up a little bit or down a little bit. I could have made the adjustment by working with the very bottom of my stringer down here on the floor. I could have, I could have cut this a little bit down here to drop it down a little bit. I could have added a shim or whatnot down here to raise it up just a hair, but we're pretty darn good and they're sitting nice and flat on the floor, so we're good. Um, but that's how I would have adjusted it if it would have been off an eighth of an inch or so. But I'm going to go ahead and set the rest of these to that chalk line. I know it's going to be plumb. Okay, so John's cutting us some blocking for our bottom step. We're just using some treated lumber. You can use 2x4. We got some 2x6 left over laying around. And we're going to ram set two pieces in between our stringers here on the bottom so that we can secure them to the floor here so that they don't, they don't move around. Got to use treated because you're right on the concrete. So we're just going to drop two blocks in there. Flush them out with our risers. And what you want to do, you want to make sure you have the same width at the bottom as you have at the top. So John's going to go down there and measure in between there. I think I have 30, 33 and a quarter overall, didn't I, John? I believe so, yes. 33 and a quarter. Okay, so let's double check our bottom, make sure we're 33 and a quarter with our blocks in there. That's close that's, enough. That's it, yep. 33 that's and a it. quarter. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and fasten those two blocks of treated lumber that we put between our stringers yesterday down to the floor to stabilize the bottom of our staircase. Now we have one of the old st style Ramses that none of our guys really love because it's not a repeater, but it works just the same. It's just going to load a 22 caliber shell in there. He's got a two and a half inch Ramses pin in there and he's going to go ahead and shoot these blocks down. Okay, so now we've got the bottom fastened. Now you can see that we got our stringers all fastened in their saddles there. So there's you've got, you've got four four screws on each side of the bracket, and that's what's going to be hanging those uh, hanging those stringers forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so the next project here is we got our one by twelve over here, which we're going to use for our skirt boards, and we're going to go ahead and figure out what we need here. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a standard level, the height of a standard level, it's about two and a half inches or so high. I always use this as a gauge to uh, put all my stringers to mark the top. So what you do is you just lay your, lay your level right across the ends of all of your treads, and you can see how it's, it's touching on each one. It should be. If, if, if it's not, you did something wrong. 
I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top, and I'm just going to mark the top of my level right up here. I'm going to make a little mark like this. And down at the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And we're going to snap a line down there. Now, this is normally tall enough to get the top of your stringer board above the nose of your treads. And that's why, you know, it's got to be at least two and a half inches. And most guys in the business do just use a standard level for this, for the gauge. We're going to snap a line through these two points. All right, you want to run that past right, right to the end. And run it a little bit wild up top here. A little bit higher than what your base trim would be. And pop that line. Now, this is the way I like to do it because I get, it gets it straight in my head when I get back over to the salt to draw this on my 1x12. I'm going to draw what I need here. It's going to come down, and then it's going to drop down. Well, my base trim can come in and meet it, like that would represent my base trim. And then i got to find out what this angle is here, and we're going to use an angle finder to figure that out. I'll show you that in a minute here. So we're going to drop down for our cut at the end, and then I'm going to put my, my square on there, and I'm just going to square it back like this, okay? So that's the way my board's going to look at the bottom, and then I'll have the back coming up. I'm the best artist here. And at the top of ours up here, we're going to be cutting off the top or flush with the plane of the floor so that our base trim can come over and drop down, okay? So we're, we're not going to go up higher than our landing and come down like this and have our base trim come in like a lot of guys do. Well, we'll come up and then we'll, we'll cut it off flush here so it goes flush against our, uh, our header, all right, our, our landing header. So it'll come up like this, we'll cut it off flush right there, and it'll look like that for a minute, and then I'll take my saw and I'll square it back, and I'll cut that piece off. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that then. So we're gonna come up, and we're gonna cut it off at that same angle that we cut it off down here. We're gonna find out what that angle is. And then once we have it in here, we're gonna, this is our landing over here. We're just gonna cut it off flush with the top of our landing. All right, so this, this right here will come out. All right, so that's what I need to know. Those are my measurements. So I need to find my long point first, which would be all the way up here and down here. They're my long points right now, all right? So <clears throat> follow my line up until I get to the plane of the, of the landing. I'm just going to put my level on there so I know exactly where it is. I'm going to draw a little line there. Okay, that's my long point. That's that point. And down here, we're going to have a, a riser right here that's going to come out three quarters of an inch. All right, so that's going to be on there. <coughs> and I want my base trim to come down this wall here and turn around and come back in to my cutoff. We're going to be using five and a half inch base trim, so I want to make sure that my cutoff is just a little bit higher than my base trim, so we're not trying to get too cute down here. So what I'm probably going to do is just come past my stringer a little bit, or my riser a little bit. In this case, I'll probably come over like, come over an inch and a half, and I'll level that line up there and bring that up to my chalk line. So there's my, there's my long point on the other side. Now, what this long point and that long point up there tells me is how long of a piece of wood I'm going to need. All right, it won't be any longer than that. From that point there, it's going to get cut straight down on the angle, and at the long point up there, it's going to get straight down on the angle. So there's my piece. So i got to manufacture that right there. So what I can do is I'm going to measure. Now John's here. Now, if he wasn't here, I would just drive a nail in there. Hook your tape on there and measure up to the top. To this long point up here, I've got 90 and a quarter. That's long point to long point. That's the, that's the overall length of my board. And we're going to be using 1 by 12. You could get away with a 1 by 10. I have 1 by 12 laying around, so 
that's what I'm using. I'm going to draw this and get some more measurements on here. Okay. All right, so from here to here, I got 90 and a quarter. That's 90 and a quarter. And then I need to cut my angle here, which we're going to find, and the same angle here, which we're going to find here. And then this coming up from the floor to my angle point is up off the floor right to that, right to that nail there. Yeah, just about eight. Okay, so that would be from there to there, eight inches. And then from that point there, this is a 90 here, we'll just cut right back off until we cut off what's left on the bottom. Now, if everything is right with the stairway, the one on this side is going to be exactly the same. So we'll make this pattern, we'll test it out here, and then we'll flip it over, and we'll see if it works on the other side. It should be the exact same thing. Okay, so before we can start making this here, we have to find out what our angle is. This will be the angle of our saw, and we're going to use a bevel square. All right, and the way this works is... This can conform to any angle that you want. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your the body of your bevel square on the red line. And then we're just going to adjust this until we get the pencil line over here. All right, then we can take this over there once we lock it out and draw it on our board over there. And we'll have the exact angle. Now the other thing you can do is, is they make levels that have the, uh, the LED readout. That the computer finds the angle for you. It'll tell you what it is. We don't have one here. This is old school. Most of you guys that are watching this at home probably don't have a level that reads digital angles, so you can get one of these. The other thing you can do is you can take a scrap of wood, which I'm not going to do, but I'm just going to show you one other way you can do this if you don't have a double square. You can take a scrap of wood and put it on the red line anywhere. This might be a little bit wide. But you can take a scrap of wood, put it on your red line, and then take a torpedo level, put it up against here, and just draw a level line up your torpedo level. And that will also give you the angle. So there's another way, if you don't have any tools, you can just do it with a simple level. I'm putting this part of the bevel square right on the red line, and getting that angle right there. Take your time, if you're using one of these squares, until you get it exactly lined up. All right, so I got it right there. I'm going to tighten the wing nut. Okay, so I know that's right. Now I can bring that over here to my wood. Check your drawing. Make sure it looks right. And we're going to we're going to make that angle. Now we don't know what it is cuz we didn't use a digital readout, but it's the correct angle because we matched it with this bevel square. I'm just going to extend that line down a little bit further. Let's draw it all the whole way across. And according to our drawing here, we need eight inches there. I'll measure down eight inches. Right there. Double check it. Measure twice, cut once. And that's our mark right there. Now from there, we got to come back on a 90 degree angle. As you can see on our drawing here, we came down eight. We're going back 90. So we can use our square here again. Place it on the line, draw that back. So we're done with this part here. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to go from this long point here up 90 and a quarter up to the top for our other angle. Hopefully we got enough. Yep, Is that yep. It? right there. Okay, make it by a quarter of an inch there. We got to come up there. We got our 90 to quarter pulled. Now we got to put our angle on up there and draw the same angle up top there. Should be it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. So, there's our piece, all right? We got this on the on the long end over there and this is the top of the stairs here that point is the other long point so I should cut that out and that should be our piece guys
All right, so that should be our piece. I'll just take it over here and see how close we are. So I'm going to have to take a little notch out of it. We got a little piece of our header board sticking out here, an inch and a half. So I'm going to have to take a little notch out of this so that we can get up and over that. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just slide it in there, get it on my on my pet on my chalk line here and make a mark. You're not going to see any of this is going to be below the tread level. So there's our piece. All right, we're right on it. We're cut off flush up here with our uh, landing header. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay a lug across here. We're going to just cut that straight across. All right, that's our last cut. Except for that notch. We've duplicated this. All right, and every staircase is going to be different pretty much, you know, for length and steps and risers and whatnot, but the way that I just did that will work for any staircase. It doesn't matter if it's going up 96 inches, 8 feet, 9 feet. And that should be us right, right there. All right, because our base trim is going to straight across right out to here and we'll find that angle and our base trim will just turn and come down a lot of guys will let their stringer board ride up the red line further and cut it off at the height of their base trim up there I'm just doing what the builder had done so it matches the whole way up because we have you know the homeowners factory stairs here from the builder so that's the way it was all right, so what we're going to do is take it over to the other side here, and it should be the exact same thing. So, base trim will come down this wall, right out over the cutoff there, and we'll turn and go down. That should work out real good. So, we're going to go ahead and make it, use this as a pattern and cut the other side. Okay, so all we have to do is trace this. Trace it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and we'll take them over there, get them on our lines, shoot them on. We're going to shoot right through the stringer board, right through the drywall, and right into the studs, the framing behind it, to fasten these. Now what we've done off camera is we marked all of our studs, we found all of our stud locations, so that when we get down here with the gun, we know to shoot in here. We know we got a stud, center of a stud right there. All right, so. You want to mark your stud locations before you start. That way you won't be just nailing into the drywall and missing the, missing the studs in the wall. So John's going to go ahead and fasten them up. He's going to get it right on the, right on the chalk line. And even with the top of the landing. Like that. And then shoot right where our lines are. Jump over to the other side and he'll come down and do the same thing to this side. All right, so the next phase. So uh, we're going to start with our first riser. You measure from the concrete floor to the top of your first tread. Now your first riser is going to be an inch or so uh, shorter than all the rest of them. The rest of them will be the, the height of our stringers, which was seven and an eighth, correct, John? Correct. So, and, and that's because you're starting on the concrete floor and you have to add the first tread. And, you know, when you put the first tread on, the thickness of the first tread, you know, adds, adds another inch to it. And then what is our next riser? It is seven and an eighth. Okay, that's exactly what we needed. That's exactly it. Yeah. So we can go ahead and cut one. Now, if you cut them a little shorter, if they're seven and an eighth, if you cut them at seven, 
That way you're not fighting it. You can just pull it up to the uh, to the tread height. And if there's a little gap at the bottom, it doesn't matter because your next tread will cover the crack. So you're not fighting them. So whatever your measurement is on the rest of the ones going up, if they measure seven and an eighth, I would just cut them seven and give yourself that eighth of an inch of play so you're not fighting them. Yep, makes it easy. Now you're also going to need, for this guy, you're going to need PL glue. This is what we like to use. All right, this is the PL3 construction adhesive. It's nice because it's super strong bonding. But it also has a little bit of forgiveness to it, um, which you want when you're when you're working with stairs because they're they're going to be moving, even though they're solid, built in place. There's still a little bit of bounce, a little bit of wiggle in any set of steps. This stuff will hold and keep the wood glued firmly, but it'll also give it a little a little freedom to move a little bit, so you're not getting creaky steps. So this is the PL3X, but you can really use just about any construction adhesive. This is just what we prefer to use. Guys, we're using our DeWalt table saw down there to rip these. Um, it's nice to use a table saw. If you don't have one, though, you can always pop a chalk line and cut it with your cirque saw. All right, so there's our first riser. And we want to double check to make sure that we're not higher than any of our tread surfaces. If anything, we want to be down just a little bit. They're good? They're good. Okay. All right, so there's our first riser. Now we're going to cut our second riser, too. Because we have to have that in before we can put our first tread on because the risers go behind the treads. Alright. And I believe we're ripping those at seven. These are. They should be just a little shorter. Just a little. Yep. Okay, now guys, if this was a finished set of stairs these cracks right here wouldn't be acceptable but since you know they, they, they should look like this side over here perfectly flush you can see we got a little bit of a gap over here now we can close that up I can show you some tricks for closing those up um, you can send a drywall screw through your stringer and into your into your skirt board and that'll pull the skirt board in whatever direction you need it to go to close off a gap so we could go through here into our skirt board tight snug that screw up a little bit and that'll pull that crack shut all right and that's why you like to go up one step at a time because you know you're working in between walls that aren't perfectly you know in line with one another there's going to be you know 16th of an inch and eighth inch discrepancies the whole way up here on the width of your treads and risers so like i said these are going to be carpeted steps and we're just not going to get that particular with them here do we have any two inch screws here yeah can you grab one, John, and run it through that string, run it through that stringer and into that skirt board and show them how you close that gap up? But we're attempting to, to close that gap by running that through there. Okay, so that drew that in there nice and tight. You can see where we want right through the stringer. We didn't get too high on that tread. You don't want to get too close to the edge. You might split off the uh, the tread from the stringer. So you want to keep your screw down at least two, two and a half inches. And uh, that'll pull your, your stringer board, your skirt board rather, right in tight to your risers. All right, so now we're looking good on the left, and we're looking nice and tight on the right. Our first riser looks good and tight, both sides. All right, so now that we got those two risers in, and they're nice and tight to our skirt boards, we can go ahead and cut our first tread. Be somewhere around 34 inches. Mm -hmm. 34 and 3 eighths. Okay. Okay, and there you go. Wow. And that's really not a bad fit, guys, for, you know, carpet grade stairs. Now, before we fasten any of this stuff we are going to apply our PL glue behind each piece and then we're going to be using the least amount of nails as possible because really the PL glue is going to be the agent that bonds these steps together it's really not the nails uh, once that glue sets up really the glue is what's holding this together so the least amount of holes in the finished treads even though they're going to be carpeted the better uh, especially again if they're going to be stain grade you're going to want to have the least amount of, of nail holes to fill and, and uh, sand and get ready for stain Remember, your risers always go on before your treads. 
Is that a whole big enough? Yeah. Here. Yeah. You just want to make sure that your the top of your risers are not taller than your tread cutouts. So you always make your your risers about an eighth of an inch less than what you actually need. That way you're not fighting if one of your stringers is slightly higher than the rest. All right. So in this case here, we can just if it's a little bit lower, we can just inch it up until we're flush with the top of our um, our tread cutouts, and we're ready to go. Oh, never mind. Nothing worse than a squeaky set of stairs. Okay, so there's our first step completely done. Uh, now we're just going to repeat that same thing the whole way up. When we get to the top, it'll be a little bit different because we have a bullnose we're going to be putting on up there. We'll show you that once we get up to the top. But uh, now it's just rinse and repeat the whole way up. So we're starting at the bottom and we're working our way up. That way we can uh, we can walk up the steps and finish them as we go. And it's looking real good. So we got four more treads and risers, and uh, then we have the bull nose, which is right here. I'm gonna show you the side profile of that. All right, that bull nose uh, goes at the top. You can see it goes from one inch to three quarters of an inch here. This three quarters inch thickness matches the thickness of the plywood on the landing up there. You can see right up there where we're gonna we're gonna butt right up against that plywood and put this bull nose at the very top so that the la the landing itself will actually have a bull nose on it. All right, and that'll be the last thing that we glue and shoot on. And we're ready for our last tread here. So there's all of our treads. Now we just have the bull nose that we're going to be putting up top here. Okay, so okay. there is our bull nose. And we'll have to glue and shoot that down. We're going to really have to put a nice bed of uh, glue on that one. Oh, yeah. Fill that baby up. And glue the ends too, John. And I like having the bull nose on the landing. Some guys don't. They just run the landing right over to the edge of the set of steps up to the riser, and it's a square cut. But I think that the landing should be bull nosed as well. So it's nice that we have this bull nose on this one. Okay, so there's our finished set of steps, guys. Really looks good. Um, and then that bull nose, you can see, that we put on the end of the landing. So our carp can come out, roll around, and tuck back, even off the landing. And our base trim will just come across and turn on the angle and head on down. Okay guys, so here's that stairway finished up here. See, we did have a little two-step banister on this side with some wrought iron spindles there. Nice heavy-duty null post. And you can see down here at the bottom how we, how our stringer board came down, or our skirt board came down to the floor there. And we just ran the top of the casing that we cut off down to match the top of the profile of the base trim. Okay, so we, 
We just used the detail off the top of the base trim and ran that up on top of our skirt boards. But you see how that, I just wanted you guys to see how that finished off down here. Remember, we cut this off at eight inches from this point down to the floor. And I wanted that to be taller than my base trim so we could get this look at the bottom. So I think that turned out good. And then at the top up here, remember how we cut the top of our skirt board straight across, even with the landing? We brought our base trim in, and right here at the top here, we cut that on a 45, we ran the profile down, and then we turned it on the angle and we shot it down to the bottom. So. It's a nice transition there. And we did the same, the same thing on the other side here. We brought that piece down, the landing, and we turned the top detail in the base trim down onto the skirt board and we shot that down the stairway there. And you can see how that, this is the existing stairway right here. These are existing skirt boards. And we did the exact same thing here, so it all matched. And then that went up to the to the door at the top of the stairs here. So that's how the stairway finished out. Now we still have a piece of handrail to put on up here on this side to match the handrail down there on the banister rail. But other than that, the stairway is done and these steps turned out real nice. And remember the method to our madness was when we got here, the first step was only four inches tall up off the floor, and now we've got equal rises of seven and an eighth inches the whole way up to the top. And there you have it. Okay, guys, I hope you got something out of that. I know it was kind of long-winded there. A little bit choppy, maybe, um, but... Uh, I wanted to get you the whole way through a set of steps from the stringers, um, you know, installing the stringers, and then get, getting the skirt boards figured out and getting them set on both sides, and then the treads and the risers. So hopefully you got enough of all three of those phases that you can figure out a set of steps yourself and get that done. I'm Eddie Case. Thanks for watching. Remember, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the Basement Finishing Man YouTube channel yet, please do. we got a lot more good basement videos coming your way. And don't forget to hit that like button. The YouTube algorithm loves it. And YouTube shows our video to more people like yourself looking for basement ideas. So, again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.